Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad, bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? The 80s just wouldn't be the 80s without the Ravel 1981 Chevy Citation, which is the kit that I want to show you today. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might want to see next. Quit all that jive talking, Trevor. Let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now hold on tight for this urgent super freak that we're going to be taking a look at today. The 1981 Chevy Citation Lowrider from Ravel. Now this model can be built one of three ways as stock, lowrider, or even as a tuner. And on the side of the box we can see the amazing lowrider in gold with its nice engine in here and the tuner version with all the air dams and front clips and special wheels. On this end of the box we can see the stock version of our Chevy Citation which begs the question, don't you want me, baby? Now you may be thinking I have too much time on my hands as I stand and deliver you this model kit. So let's rip the lid off and see what's inside. Here, of course, we have our instructions and our decal sheet on the inside. I did start to work a little bit on this body and there it is with the interior inside. Now here you can see these really cool gold plated wheels and chrome wheels as well as the tampo printed white walls. It's very nice. Inside here I've got the glass all wrapped up and then we've got our white plastic components including our chassis there as well. And then there it is there. Really cool stuff. There's the chrome grill and the stock and custom wheels as well as these nice rolled pans that we've got in here. <clears throat> and our tires and then a Ravel sign-up sheet. Now, I don't want to feel a little bit under pressure, but uh, this is becoming my 9 to 5 job here. Anyway, here's our instruction sheet for the 81 Chevy Citation Lowrider 3-in-1, and you get a nice history right here, as well as a decent photograph of the model itself. Now here we have our little Chevy Citation engine block going together. There is one little thing though, I think I would glue on the valve covers after I put on the intake manifold because there's a little ridge around them and that might make it difficult to put this on if you put those on first, but hey, I don't know. You might want to experiment too. Anyway, this is a Chevy V6 motor. We got our chrome valve covers, our right and left hand side cylinder heads, our exhaust manifolds and the engine block molded in two pieces. Now this is a front wheel drive car, so you got this nice little transmission transfer case thing here. So there's the outer part of it and the little front part of it, which will glue together. Panel 1C is showing the distributor being glued on, and then we've got this rectangular air cleaner, which is really cool. And then we've got our alternator, chrome, gluing onto our fan belt and power steering pump. And that all pops onto the front on the timing chain cover. Now panel D shows the air intake being glued onto the back and this is how it will all look from the top. So if this is sitting in an angle, don't be alarmed. Panel E shows the engine being popped into the steering linkage. This is of course rack and pinion style steering and that's how it's going to look from the side view and the front view. Panel F is showing the crossover exhaust pipe being glued in place. So again, this is how it's going to look. Now here we've got our exhaust engine assembly. We have our chassis with the tailpipe being glued into place with the catalytic converter. And then our motor drops down into the chassis just like that. And there's the top view and the bottom view just so you know you're on the right track. Panel 3 is showing our wheel and suspension assembly. So here we have three piece wheels. Now these are going to click onto these axle pins. So make sure that uh, any seam lines are cleaned up on there real nice so that these will click on and the wheels will turn because once these click on they're locked in place forever. So here you've got your option. So these are the stock wheels or you can use these neat turbo wheels instead and then pop them through your tire and put them onto your tire or your wheel back, pardon me. And then here's the low rider wheels. Now these ones are all the gold plated so you get knockoffs and your wire wheels. And then there's like this inner wheel tube kind of thing. And then the low rider tire and the wheel retainer and all those clipped together. A little metal pin in there as well. Really cool stuff. 
Down here you've got your rear axle, this is one piece. You got shock absorbers and an anti-sway bar, and that all goes in and drops on the chassis once you click your wheels in place. Panel 4 shows the front body assembly. This is quite simple, your shock absorbers drop down into that notch there, and then your wheels pop onto place. Panel 4C here shows our radiator with the support wall, and then our fan glues on there, and then that'll drop into the front of the body. There's our windows with the rear view mirror, so that pops in there. And then we've got our rear taillights, and here's how to paint them all. And then the rear bumper will go up onto the top. Now this panel here shows our stock and lowrider options. So there's the stock grille being put in place with the uh, lenses going in those holes. And there's our front bumper, and there's a front spoiler too. And here's a paint note as well for uh, painting the dark blue pearl on your Chevy logo. And over here we've got the turbo version. So this is the grille and bumper for the back with our taillights popping into place. And this panel here shows the turbo front end going on with that nice roll pan and kind of European look in the front. And then we've got clear light lenses that cover over the four round headlights. This panel here shows the painting of our dashboard and how, look at how cool all that is. You get the steering column and the steering wheel as well. And that'll all go together for the beginning of our interior assembly. Now here we have our dashboard completed being dropped into place inside our interior bucket. You get separate armrests and a gear shifter in here. Our next panel shows our two-piece bucket seats being glued together and then dropped in place inside the interior bucket. Our two final panels show the interior being dropped into the body, and then we've got our firewall with our master cylinder being glued together and painted, and then dropped in as well. Now here we've got our final assembly for our model, so there's the completed chassis being popped into the completed body, and then we have to add in our upper radiator hose and our air intake hose as well. And to wrap up the body, here we have these nice little side vents that you can put on. That's for the stock version, I believe. And then we've got our side mirrors with the two-piece mirror. There's the reflective part going into the housing. And then we have the stock hood, or you can put in the turbo hood with the little opening right there. There are so many options for the decals on this model kit. I can't wait to show you the decal sheet at the end of the video. But until now, our lips are sealed. <laughs> Alright, this is the X11 version with the special custom wheels, or the other version of the X11 with the more stock kind of wheels to it. And here we have our Turbo Citation X version, which is really cool. Again, there's the offset stripe just to line up with the top of the air filter for our turbo engine, and then the front pans in the back. Again, really, really cool looking. Next we have the decal placement for our lowrider, and again this is a really cool kit. Look at that nice one up front, and look at how far out those wheels stick. It's got a license plate also that says Crazy Low, which this thing definitely is. I can't wait to see the plastic part, so Trevor, take it away! Thank you for that great lead up, Danny. So here we are with our 1981 Chevy Citation, and this thing is really nicely done considering, well, it's a Chevy Citation. How many people actually own one back in the day? Let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, there, look at that citation script right on the front fender. Again, really nice. It's got the paddle style door handles that lift up that way. And look at that detail in that pillar there. And then across the back, we've got a little spoiler happening. Just a little cute one there. And uh, look inside the engine bay. You can see the nice shock towers up front. It's got the McPherson style European front end. And there's braces again going up to the firewall support. Our battery is molded in place down there, as is the windshield wiper bottle. But again, it looks pretty nice. You don't have to go too deep on the battery like some of the other uh, Ravel monogram kits of the past. Look at the vents in there, as well as the windshield wipers. This is a really superb looking little body for such a small car. And there's our gas filler door as well. Underneath some mold marks, but nothing too severe. Nothing that looks like it would impede anything from sitting down properly. So again, a really excellent little model. I'm not sure whether to build it stock or build it as the tuner. So speaking of the tuner version, here we've got the custom front end and the hood. And what I wanted to show here was just how well this actually does fit on the car. So if we just put this into place, 
hopefully. There we go. You can see the nice tight fit of the hood. There's no gaps around it at all. It looks perfect. And then that front end will just fit on there nicely. Doesn't even require any putty. Again, excellent work by Ravel. See the big Chevy logo up there? Very nicely done. And this thing will look cool as a tuner. So here we have the chassis for our Chevy Citation. And it is a little bit different from what we normally show here because here's a fuel cell and here's a spare tire holder with a little latch there. You can see the nice frame on here. It, this is a unibody car, of course, so that the rocker panels would be part of the frame. And then we've got the nice subframe up front. They really did a nice job of this. I mean, look at all the detail up there. Again, excellent work. Nice and smooth underneath so that nothing uh, sits the interior up like a mold mark or whatever. Again, excellent. But this is, again, a Chevy Citation, so it's a pretty odd subject matter for such great detail. Here we've got the interior tub, and this is a little bit soft on detail on the side, so I can see why they added in the uh, separately molded door handles. But again, it does look nice from this angle. The nice bench seat in the back looks terrific. There's some pretty high rails in here, so the seats would mount accurately on sliders. That is one really tall looking center console. I do believe that's the way they are. They do have um, standard type pedals in here. So you got your gas, your brake, your clutch, and they even have the parking brake pedal up front. So again, excellent work on this, really nicely done. Could use a couple of these models just to build the different variations. Here we have a really cool parts tree. You can see the front bumper here with the chin spoiler, the hood, the rear bumper, the turbo engine parts, the exhaust manifold with catalytic converter, the rack and pinion style steering, the fan, the two-piece rear, or pardon me, the two-piece differential. And then here we have our engine block and our radiator with the wall. And bring this up to the camera again. You can see the nice detail. Underneath we've got all the correct matting. There are no mold marks underneath there. That is really superb. I don't think I've seen anything that good under a hood. <laughs> there are some on the radiator wall though, and a bunch of things in the back. But overall, I mean, the detail on here is quite nice for such a small car. The rack and pinion even has the little springy bits in there, and, or the coil, I guess. And then there's our radiator. Again, very excellent work for such a strange little car. Our next parts tree includes the intake manifold, and our firewall here. This is a small car, so everything will look big on the firewall. That, of course, is our heater with the motor. There's our four wheel backs and our rear axle. And then there's the little side vents that go on the body. So some mold marks on the back here, but nobody's going to really see that. So there's the front there. Again, excellent work. That slot would be for the master cylinder to fit in. There's our wheel backs. Again, everything looks nice and correct. And again, we'll make a really nice model for your shelf. Our next parts tree has our engine parts. And this is such a tiny little motor, so be careful when you're uh, clipping the parts out that you don't lose anything. There's our exhaust manifolds, our cylinder heads, the McPherson struts up front. And then we've got our mirror housings and our alternator and whatnot. There's our steering column and steering wheel as well as the brake booster and our power steering pump and our belts and pulleys, of course. So again, really nice work. A little bit softer here, but that's okay. Uh, that's one of the braces there, I do believe. But again, excellent little work for such a cute little Chevy product. In order to really pilot your Chevy Citation, you're gonna have to sit down in the driver's seat and here we have both the driver and passenger front buckets, as well as the dashboard to help you navigate and to always make sure of your speed. Now, a friend of mine actually did have a, a Chevy Citation. I think it was his was an 83 with the bench seat in it. So again, we uh, didn't really have the buckets, or he didn't. But there's that upholstery pattern. Then on the back, you can actually see the little uh, ashtray in here and the lift handle to tilt the seats forward for people getting into the back. So again, really cool. Now this is one thing we always thought was odd, was that the radio is mounted vertically instead of horizontally. 
But, you know, does it really matter as long as you can listen to In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins, which of course also came out in 81. There are some really cool vents on here. The glove box way down low that hits your knees. Another ashtray. And of course all our instruments and our gauges up here. So again, really nicely done. Excellent for such a uh, really interesting car. Here we have our chrome for our Chevy. And there's our front grille, which looks very heavy. There's our wheels and the custom wheels as well as the tuner components and the turbo there so let's just take a look at these up into the camera i do like the wheels how they look those are nice wheels shrek <laughs> no really they are nice wheels look at that grill such detail chevy citation again really excellent kit but again maybe not the most desirable model on your shelf but boy i mean look at this thing this is superb here we have the glass components for our Chevy Citation, and uh, I didn't realize this, but the back is actually clear and not painted red. So that would explain all the painting and the instructions. Again, really nice glass on here. You've got your four round headlights, as well as the square type headlights. Again, very nicely done. Take a look at all that detail in there. It's even got the waffle pattern inside the lights. Oh, and you've even got the rear defroster the uh, electric style molded in the back of the window here. So again, really cool stuff. Looks just like the Citation that my friend had. Now for the stock tires, we have these Michelin TRXs. And again, these are the European style tire. The tread on here is really nice and they are quite solid. So the tuner is supposed to be a European edition of this car. Well, these tires would fit right in. So here we have the wheels and tires for the lowrider edition of this kit. I'm going to keep them in their plastic bags just because they folded up so nicely in the kit. Anyway, am I wrong or do these look like they were made by Pegasus? Here we got the uh, nice gold for our wire wheels with the knockoffs that would go on there. Then these are spacers to fit inside the rubber tires and our wheel backings and we've got these little metal pins here. Now let's just take a look at the tires. They do have a nice little tread on them. I can see them through the bag, of course. But look at the nice uh, white wall on there. Really cool stuff. And again, should make your lowrider look excellent. So now it's my turn again. And boy, look at these decals. I mean, no wonder why you need about five of these models, because there's so many options. So here's the black stripes for the X11, and that's version one. Version two had the big X11s on the door panels. And then uh, look at all these, you get the Chevy Citation logos on here and all the little gauges for the instrument panel, the Chevy logo there, the bow tie. You also get Goodyear if you don't want them to be Michelins, <laughs> to be odd. There's another tire name on there as well. Look at the stripes on here. I mean, this is so cool. There's the turbo ones as well. And then you got Turbo CI, California plates, California plates. Anyway, the 2.8 turbo, and uh, there you go. More Chevy stuff. X11 license plates, two different versions of those. And then you've got the Mystical Dreamer here. That again, for your lowrider. Really, I mean, like, this is just crazy. Crazy low, that's for sure. Boy, man, you get dog tired building so many of these Chevelles. I hope you found my review most triumphant in choosing the 1981 Chevy Citation. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website. And don't forget to subscribe right down here. Now, as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other.